trust that you are having a good day. Some people ask me, why am I not uploading daily? Well, I decided to put on an audio every other day. Also, people say that these teachings are difficult, but if you listen to it carefully a few times, then you can decide what's in it for you. It's all up to you. It's all your decisions. All right, using headphones and earphones will enhance your pleasure. Enjoy the day and chill. Hello. Okay, so I'm very sensitive to energy. Good. That means you have been in alignment and liked it, and when you're not in alignment, you don't like it. That's what that means. When someone says they're sensitive, it means they've tasted the sweetness of alignment and they can't bear the not sweetness of not alignment. That's a very good thing. Okay. So as I go through my day and I interact with people and I be the light. That's the next thing that we were going to ask you because if you've tended to your vibration, so you are sort of holding the room, so to speak, at least the room for you. You're not trying to control the others in the room, but they bounce off of you if they are not in harmony with this harmony that you've got going on. Yes. So as I am the light, something that I experience is that I'm willing to point out when I feel they go to the darkness. <laughs> well, then let us just say for a moment, you were the light. Okay. <laughs> So, okay, so as I'm drawn to the darkness as well. Well, then that means you're not holding the room. The mix of what you all brought is activating something within you that has more momentum than the momentum of your alignment, which means things like you haven't meditated steadily or you're not selfish enough to want to feel so good that you're not willing to go over there. Okay. That makes sense. In the case of most people who find themselves doing that, it's a little bit of so much enjoying alignment and so much having your nose in other people's business. It's hard to integrate and not do that, but it's a sort of conditional thing because if they weren't doing that, it'd be easier for you to stay in alignment. And the fact that they're not doing it, it's not keeping you, but it is influencing your not alignment. And then it feels to you, if you could just straighten them out, then your alignment would come easier. But it never works that way because you end up going with them. So sometimes I feel like I can stay in the light. Yes, sometimes you do. And <laughs> I almost feel guilty for it. I can almost feel them resenting me Then in for that it. case, you were in the light. So then I'm just going back again. Because you can't feel guilty <laughs> and be in the light, you So see. I guess maybe guilt is the wrong word. No, it's the right word. So what's happening is, and most everyone does it, you get a lot of the way you feel from the way others are reflecting back to you. And so instead of reaching for the feeling of alignment with your inner being, who is always steady and always there for you, just waiting for you to be ready. Sometimes you focus upon something that you want to affect. When someone holds you as their object of attention, and they are tuned in, tapped in, turned on, and they are loving you. Oh, it does feel good to you. But if that same person who you are accustomed to loving you is now looking at you from a place of not being in alignment, it does not feel so good. And that's why you say you're sensitive to the energy. And it rarely has anything to do with you, but you take it personally because you're feeling something around it. And so really, we could talk about these kinds of things all day, every day about behavioral science and what you should do and why people do. And really, the only thing that you need to do is just meditate a little and get in alignment and just do it every day until you just find yourself unwilling to let your thoughts go in places where they do not feel good. Esther will say, well, I need to be informed. And we say, go ahead. We'll be here when you get back. <laughs> and she'll say, well, I need to explore this in case it comes up. Go ahead. We'll be here when you get back. Come back soon, Esther. Come back soon. But sometimes it's not that soon. 
because there's always a mix of things going on around. And so we're talking about molding energy. We're talking about using your blessed sensitivity to know when you're in alignment with all that you are, not only your power, your love, not only your power and love, your clarity, not only your power and love and clarity, but your satisfaction in the moment, which is what it all is about all the time. Sometimes energies make me uncomfortable. Well, we would think that would be true. Okay. Can you help me understand what that is? Are you, well, what energies are you talking about? I'm not really sure. So your statement is sometimes I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. Sometimes I'm uncomfortable because I have deviated from my dominant energy stream and I've introduced resistance into the mix and it makes me agitated and worse. That makes sense. So when you understand that the way you feel is about your relationship, your energetic relationship with the energetic energy of the thought you're thinking, we can use the word energy or vibrational interchangeably in this analogy and the vibration and energy or knowledge of your inner being. That's all it ever is. If you see someone and for some reason, something about them makes you uncomfortable, you've found something in them that you feel critical about. And because your inner being didn't feel critical about them, you've caused some sense of separation between you and your inner being and you are not comfortable. You are at your most comfort when you are at your most alignment with the source within you. You are at your most comfort when you are loving someone. But if you've practiced not loving for a while, then sometimes hating feels more natural, but it never feels comfortable. We like that we can have this conversation with you about the difference between something that feels natural or normal and something that feels satisfying and comfortable. What feels comfort, what feels like homecoming, what feels like well-being, what feels like love. That's always vibrational attunement to the whole of who you are. And even the slightest separation from that in some way makes you uncomfortable. So you watch even in what's going on in your world today. Some things that you felt uncomfortable about at first, as you watched it over and over again, you felt less uncomfortable. It began to feel more normal to you, you see. We want you to understand the difference between something that feels normal and something that feels comfortable, something that feels normal and something that feels satisfying. Sometimes people say, Esther has said it to us, Abraham, I was happier in my hatred before I knew you. <laughs> because the tug of war wasn't as strong. But when you have flowed in harmony with who you are, you just can't stand not flowing in harmony with who you are. The discomfort is noticeable. That's why you say you're sensitive. And so sometimes you see people who seem to be fine in all of that discomfort. Well, it's normal to them, but they are not fine. And that's why you see often what you see when they're not in alignment with who they are. So as I see it, I just be bold and bright and stay there. And that's the best way to combat it. We want to put it to you this way. Don't combat it. When you see it, don't be brave and bold and combat it. Leave. Leave the room. Leave the environment and start over again. It's sort of like this. Quiet my mind, come into alignment, go out into the world. It feels so good, it feels so good, not so good. Goodbye. Go back. <laughs> Meditate, come into alignment, come into alignment, it feels so good. Come out into the world. It feels so good, it feels so good. Hello, 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 it feels so good. Hello, hello, hello. Does it feel good? Goodbye. Go back to meditation. Come into alignment, it feels so good. Really, just do that. Just do that. Just find alignment, hold it as long as you can, and then don't try to force anybody to do anything different when you haven't found it. Because when you lose it, it's because you're on a momentum of thought, either inspired by someone else or by your own memory or beliefs that isn't serving you. Esther had a speech to give as she was a teenager in high school on graduation. And it was long, and she had decided that it would be memorized and that she would not take notes. She would not have notes. She would know it. And her mother helped her write it. And it was beautiful. And it was long. And it was finished about three months before graduation. So every time Esther would get into the bathtub, which was once or twice a day, she would go as far as she could go. And when she couldn't go any further, 
She would finish her bath, get out, and read the next piece. And then next time she took a bath, she would go as far as she could go. She just kept starting here and going as far as she could go, and starting here and going as far as she could go, and starting here and going as far as she could go. And what she didn't know was happening was that her confidence in what she did know made her ready for the next part that she didn't know. Until you would think that this part she would know really well, and this part she wouldn't know well at all, but it wasn't that way. That part was easy to know because she knew this part. Are you sort of following us? Your success at alignment will carry you through anything. If we leave you only with the impression that you go out into the world and then the first thing that happens you run away from, that's not the impression that we're wanting to give you. We want you to move into a greater opportunity to find your stability so that you can go out in the world. Because what we wish for you is not to be cloistered in your closet where nothing will disturb you, except claustrophobia. <laughs> we want you to be out in the world where all things are possible. Out where the true delight is there for you to be ready for, you see. And after a little while, you begin to feel invincible. You don't feel afraid. You don't feel vulnerable. You don't feel frightened about things. You don't feel like you need to boss others around because your observation of what they do that took you from your alignment. Because in time, you will reach the place where nothing will take you from your alignment. That's what true empowerment is. That's what true enlightenment is. That's how your inner being feels all the time, you see. And it's how you are capable of feeling in time. So just find what feels good for a little while and just hold yourself there. And then watch yourself expand into more and more and more until you will be so expansive that you, others will be awestruck by the breadth and depth of that which you are. And you will have an eagerness to jump into new adventures that you've never experienced before. And they will say, how dare you do that? And you say, because I trust the process and I trust myself and I trust well-being. In other words, I'm not afraid of anything because I understand that well-being is the basis of who I am. It's lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and, and all because of your sensitivity <laughs> and your unwillingness. In other words, I'm just not going to not feel good, not for very long. Just not for very long.